I don't care what you're thinking about moving abroad, just do it because you'll never be 100% prepared. Like, it doesn't matter. You're going to get there, things going to go wrong, things going to go right, things going to be indifferent. But if you just keep sitting at home planning and planning and planning and planning and planning, you're just going to be more devastated because you spent all that time planning and it's still going to go off script. Yep. Them two battle for number one every year. For real? Yeah. Alright guys, so we're back for another video. This time it's going to be an interesting one. Sitting down with some clients of ours as well as like just great people. We're going to talk about their trip to Merida and just everything that it had to deal with. <laughs> as well as the positives to kind of get an idea of like, you know, what you may deal with or just, just how that whole onboarding process is coming into Merida. Uh, so I'm Cameron, as you know. I'm Ron. And I'm Nene. All right, so you guys reached out in August about coming to Merida, but y'all had already had plans before. Like four years, y'all been doing research and planning. So, like, what kind of stuff did y'all find or what were y'all doing? So, let's see. The first channel I found was Amora Shanti. I think that's how you say her name, from Austin. I watched her for a while. She had moved out here single with her kids. And I was like, well, she could do it. We could do it. Okay. Then I found um, y'all channel like two years ago so then we started watching y'all along with move abroad and thrive and so yeah, cool. those were the three channels we kind of really watched the most because i got the most authentic feel from y'all off youtube like it wasn't a change it was consistent you know and it was just showing the real and that's what we kind of wanted to see like what is it really like you know what are you doing what is stuff costing where do you live you know what's the good what's the bad it wasn't all you know because a lot of people on youtube they don't tell the bad because they say you're not supposed to talk bad on youtube mm -hmm. and so you get a lot of information misinformation because they leave a lot of stuff out but like yeah. by watching y'all i kind of knew to expect a lot of the challenges that we ran into between you and car test like these challenges were not a surprise at all like i knew we were gonna have that's smooth. I'm glad we telling the real, you know, there's always an issue. It's always something. Always. You just got to push through it. You yeah. Know? So. so because of that, like, it wasn't a shock for us. I would just tell him, like, I knew this was this was a possibility, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, we're watching YouTube videos. Uh, like, you found, like, the whole Merida is the safest city. Yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You found the... Uh, so then I fact-checked that. I went and did some statistics and study because I'm real, like, analytical, so I need to fact check so i started looking at crime i started looking at the cities i started looking at where people living started looking like how many black people are in merida how many are not who are leaving why are they leaving and different things like that just trying to get the whole story besides just you know a blanket statement right and um, so just went from there so i really did some digging like to know and then i wanted to know what areas would fit us mm -hmm. you know because we didn't want to just come and just live in a predominantly expat community either. We want yes. to be able to come and take the culture because the whole point is for our children to grow culturally. Okay, where can we live where we're comfortable? And we, we still will see some people that, you know, we might recognize skin tone wise, but at the same token, that's not all we're seeing. So it's just like right. we just picked up and move a piece of the states. You're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So where were y'all at in the states? Actually, this is a good place to. We were in Houston. And Houston, Texas. <laughs> And that prepared us because Houston, Texas is ghetto when it comes to utilities, water. You can't drink the water in Houston. There's a boil notice like every other day. Like, do not drink the water. If it, you had to boil it two hours ago, why is you drinking it three hours later? I'm not. I'm not and doing then people it. always surprised out here. Like, you can't drink the water. And it's like, yeah, that's a reality for some Americans. Even in North you Carolina, they have boil water notices. So, like, we clearly knew we should stop just drinking the water in the United States a long time. Yeah. So, we always did bottled water. In Houston, we just really started going to the five gallon jugs like we was already in Mexico mm -hmm. because it like I started to get sick from the water. So I was just like, okay, okay, let's yeah. The water we would always sit um, Houston prepped us for the move. Mm -hmm. uh, for the it rained in Houston, Houston, power would go out yep. like for hours. I'm talking about yeah. not even a heavy rain. You get a drizzle, and they say you know poo -poo, power internet out for like hours, and you just sitting there like mad because it don't make sense to you. Like, why don't we have power? Yeah, like so. I would be so upset and it would be in the heat of summer in Houston, which is 100 plus degrees with the humidity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just like, well, we got power. This is a whole city, like major yeah. city in the United States. Common thing. Streets be flooded within 15 minutes of raining. I'm talking about like not a little bit of flood. I'm talking about you got to go around some streets closed, yeah. you know, because they don't have the infrastructure for the water to drain. 
even though they've been through Harvey and all these different hurricanes, they yeah. still not prepared. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. And I think that's also another like segue into why y'all here. Why did y'all come to Merida? Like, what about why did y'all leave the U.S. Basically. For us, it was what we wanted to. I'll say my, my piece was is because we have two black sons and they're yes. young, and right. we didn't want them to be colonized to think that the only thing they need to do in the United States is to get a good job, buy a house, and own things to live the American dream because it's not the American dream and it's not for them. And so for us, it was about getting them out and reinventing a version of life that none of us or none of our family has ever experienced, mm -hmm. which is why we haven't had a lot of support doing this, why we had to go to strangers right, instead right, of people right. we know. Yeah, y'all talked about that, reinventing, not recreating what mm -hmm. you had in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think, too, with us was um, the elections was coming up, and we started looking into the Project 2025. She had did some, um, what kind of work was that you went to Atlanta for? Um, I do grassroots organizing. It was, it was, like yeah, she went to a, a, a conference or some a workshop. And when she came back, she was distraught about it, so we started talking. And then from there, I started looking into the Project 2025, just reading it some. And then when you had, uh, what would you call it, the blue screen or whatever, when everything powered down, the right. airports, the couldn't get your bank, your bank accounts froze, all that other stuff went on. That started letting me look into some things like, hold on. It's some, it's some janky stuff going on. You mm -hmm. feel me? So after that, we really started honing in real quick. And then I think that's around the same time you guys started talking about you was doing consultations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it was like, shoot, we rock with y'all anyway. Let's take them up on it. And then from there, the rest was just history. Like she said, having the two black sons, you're starting to see on, on, on TVs, uh, but a, the black lady got shot in the face by the cop. You know what I'm saying? He told her she was going to do it. Then you turn around, you got some another lady get done. Then she recently had seen, right before we left, a little girl get uh, her playing on the playground. She's like seven, eight years old. She get her throat slit by a racist. You know what I'm saying? It's like all this yeah. stuff going on. There's nothing happening to these people that's doing this, or is it something happening happening to them? It's not major. They're yeah. getting a slap on the wrist. So you start to see that the value of the black life really does not matter. Yeah. You know. So now it's either you got to do something for you and yours, or you can sit there and become a potentially become a statistic. Right. So. This is a play we decided we wanted to do regardless of how anybody felt. Um, and then on the back side of it, if anybody, let's just say, stuff hit the fan later on, um, people have an out, you know, like have a way to get out or how did y'all guys do this? Because it's somebody they know and they trust and they love. Right. You know what I mean? Because we already seen when he was in office before, when he gave them the green light go, they tore up the, 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 the Senate off. or Congress or whatever, you know, and it's, no, it was real, no, no real ramifications for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a couple of them went to jail, but he already saying he gonna get them boys out. So what you think gonna happen on this go around when he gonna do this at the top of the year, then he got another whole four years and they ready to go. I mean, I get it, we gonna have people ready to go, but now you got a whole nother problem on your hand. All right. I'm cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm yeah, cool, yeah. let's go learn and do something else. Perfect, <laughs> perfect, perfect answer. <laughs> So let's get into the hiccups, some of the things that y'all had like issues with. So first we can start off and y'all getting dropped off in the heart of Central. Yes. Took the $10, $10 you bus. Took the $10 bus. To Central. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we hopped on a bus from Progresso, not the IDO, no fancy bus, just uh, like an old school Greyhound bus. They had, they had AC, um, they had stuff, space for your luggage under and on the bus. So that was fine. It was $10 and we got on the bus and we came and it dropped us right in the heart of Merida. So, if you haven't seen it, it, it's not that it's bad, it's just, it's not made for strollers. It's not made for a large group of people to be walking and taking up the whole sidewalk. Like, we were real inconvenient to the local people. Yeah, they let, <laughs> and, it, they let us know that, too. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and not in a rude way, nah, but they nah, were just nah, like, nah. they yeah, were trying yeah. to get around us because they weren't in a hurry to go where they were going. We just trying to figure out where we going, so we walked in circles, lost for a while. Until we end up just coming to a KFC and we just like, okay, let's just, this is a good place to order Uber because we had no idea what we want. And our Airbnb host said we could check in early. So I was like, let's just go because we got all this stuff wheeling around. And it was like eight of us walking around down Central in circles. And I mean, we literally did circles. We thought we was going to one place mm -hmm. and realized we had just circled and came right back to where we started. You can get lost. Central yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Real, real quick. And so, and there was no English speaking 
right there in Central. So that was also like a wake up because then none of our cell phones were working, so we couldn't use Google Translate. So we just had to use the Spanglish we knew and just go from there. So that was also interesting. We KFC got, didn't have Wi-Fi. We, so got that hit. We, got hit. <laughs> we got hit with it real fast, real quick. That's good. Yeah, I got dropped into it and was like, okay, here we go. This is what we talked about. <laughs> yeah, when we got this off the bus station, about. it was like tucked away in the back of a street, yep. so we didn't know where it was. So when we coming out the bus, it was like, which way do we go? Because it was kind of like you were in an alley. Yeah. It's like, let's just, let's just go to the left. Just pick the way. Just pick go the to the left. Yeah. And that's what we did. That's beautiful, man. <laughs> And you said the KFC took, you said the Uber took an hour and the KFC took an, an hour. hour. So basically we got in the KFC, the kids are hungry at this point because they hadn't ate, it's now like probably about one o'clock in the afternoon, they hadn't ate since about seven o'clock that morning. So they hollering hungry of course. So I'm like, okay, let's just go to KFC, we know they're going to eat that. You know, we ain't trying to throw them on tacos right away. Mm -hmm. So we go into KFC, I order an eight piece and order the Uber at the same time. So the first Uber. Says it's two minutes away. Cancels. Like after we waited 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Or the second Uber. Okay, it's like, okay, it'll be here in 12 minutes. So at this point, we've been in KFC about 30 minutes. Chicken's still not ready. I'm just patiently standing there waiting. But what I notice is they serve based off of who came in. Like, it don't matter if you order one piece and I order eight piece. If I order my eight piece before you order that one piece, you're not getting that one piece till I get my eight piece. And so they were serving in that order. So it was literally like... And not in a hurry. Like, they were just getting it together. And so I was just standing there waiting because I already knew people said, you're going to wait for food. Like, you not don't think they're going to be in a rush to serve you like they are in the United States. They don't have no time or to say that you've been waiting two minutes, none of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just standing there waiting. I'm looking at the Uber. I'm like, well, I just hope the Uber don't get here and the chicken not ready because then now that's a problem. So then the second Uber comes, pulls in, and then Ron goes out there to get it. And he like, no, no. I can't do it, sorry, and he pulls off. And I'm like, okay, I heard this happen. So we order another Uber. So thank now this one you. says, yes, I told you. This one <laughs> says so, and it doesn't help that we also a family of five because that's considered XL. So now we're not riding a normal small car and we had luggage. So we have to always get Uber XL too, so that's a big thing too. So we order another one. So now it says, okay, another 20 minutes. Chicken's still not ready. So I'm like, okay, hopefully by the time this Uber gets here, it'll actually take us and the chicken will be ready. And that's what happened. By the time the Uber got there in 20 minutes, literally five minutes before the Uber pulled up, they handed me the chicken, and the Uber pulled up, and we hopped in, and he took us to the Airbnb, and he put us on the street. That's it. See, I, I want to say, like I said, thank you for that, because you gave us the heads up that you had just said in an episode, like, hey, I think you had my grocery shopping or something. Mm -hmm. and yep. The Uber came, dipped on you. The Uber's right down the street. You seen him. I you looked him dead in the eye. Yeah, I'm moving it. And he just pulled so, off. So <laughs> when I went out there, I'm telling the dude, because he had to make a U-turn in the alley to come back. But it's, it's got a security guard right there, right? So I knew I couldn't go back. Because when I went to step, old boy looked at me like, what you doing? So I was like, man, um, my ride. So he looking confused. So I'm like, my Uber. He like, nah, basically you can't pass. So I'm like, what you mean? So when the dude come back, I'm like, hey, buddy, Uber, yeah, yeah. He was like, somebody's wife, he couldn't help us. I'm like, what you mean you can't help us? You were here. Yeah, he left us, bro. And I was like, Cam said this going to happen. Yep. She being cool, I'm ready to go crazy. <laughs> right, fresh <laughs> off the boat. <laughs> All right, so when you got to Airbnb, the window, the window. Tell me about okay. that. Okay. <laughs> well, first thing first, even just getting to the Airbnb was fine. So then we get there, and I'm trying to open the door. Didn't know it's a sliding door. So that's the thing here in Mexico. There's a lot of sliding gates, not push and pull gates. So you come in front of the U.S., you used to just a push and pull, basically. That's the majority of the doors, unless they glass sliding doors. So it's this big metal door, and I'm trying to open. I just keep pushing and pulling, and it's not open. I'm like, we can't get in. I looked, the Uber and put them out on the curb, so all our stuff on the curb. He down there with the kids, and I'm still trying to get this gate open by pushing and pulling, but it actually slides. Somehow or another, I do something, I see this slides, and I get it open. Go get them. We go in, and we open the door, and we go into the kitchen, and I look up, and there's a window missing about this big at the top of the kitchen door. And I'm like, that wasn't in the description. And I'm pretty sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I... So I text the host, and the host was very responsive. They were like, yeah, sorry, the last guest broke it. I'm going to get it fixed in a few days. That's, that's no good because we here just for two yeah. days. And y'all know about the critters. Yeah, we saw the gecko and the big roach trying to come in <laughs> as I'm looking at this. And I was like, okay. Cartes had already said, well, you know, 
when it's nighttime and you cut the lights on, that's when they want to come in. I was like, so what are we about to do in this kitchen? Mm -hmm. So I end up just rigging it, taking the table mat and flipping it on the outside of the door so it covered both sides. So at least whatever was going to try to come in had a little fight. It was going to have a struggle <laughs> right. or a delay. It's going to be no easy win. <laughs> but, yeah. The good thing is the bedroom did have a door that we could close to it. So if nothing else, we were just going to come out and be surprised by what was up in the kitchen. So uh, Yeah. Yeah, and that happens. That's one of the things. It's like people don't realize. Like I, I told one of my friends, I was like, I'm battling with roaches sometimes at 2 a.m. Like you don't understand. I'm throwing books. Boom, you hit them. <laughs> And they just drop, and then they get back up. Cause they like, big boys. They yeah. big boys. They big. Yeah. yeah they had one in the pool the other day. Swimming, just back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. He died. Roman, Roman was like, he dead. The water killed him. I was like, I don't know if it's the water, but just get him out. <laughs> but you know, on the flip side of that, that's her side of when we got off the out the Uber. But I think I was telling you, and I shared on the channel. The people here are real nice. So you got to understand that when we coming from the states, we are very hostile. So while she's down there fighting with the door, we got all our stuff out here, and a guy walk up. Well, actually, two guys walk up on me from the coffee like, shop. They like we didn't notice at the time, so <laughs> they like you need help. But the way they came up on me, it was like they was gonna try to run me, you know, running with money. So I'm like, nah, man, I'm good. I don't need no help. So he he looked around and pointed all my stuff. And I'm in my mind thinking, like, you know, you're going to come outside like a coming to America moment. <laughs> coming to America moment. It's hard. And be like, you know, hey, I got all the good stuff. Right. And it'll be your stuff. So I'm like, nah, we don't need no help. So he's looking like, yo, you need help. Look, man, I don't need no help. And I had to realize, like, these people really probably were trying to really help me. Right. But I just lost all my help because I, I, I'm so hostile. Yeah, you know, being so hostile. Yeah, yeah, because he looking at me like, bro, you got all, you really need some help. Yeah, I have to send you a picture of the amount of stuff we had, Man. so you can get a visual of it of us down central. Yeah. And then it was, it was, it, it was, it was very interesting. Yeah, we had a whole bunch of stuff, and he was like, yeah, you really need, I don't need no help. Yeah. And I, I touched on that too a little bit. Like we talked about yeah, that. And yeah. It's like, yeah, man, you just come from the US, you come tight. Like you just come. <laughs> yeah. Tense. Like when you remember they say buenos dias, they say buenos tardes, they saying good morning. I know a lot of Americans aren't used to that. Please understand, people here are polite. And honestly in most like most places I've been to, people are more polite than Americans, so it's like we just need to you gotta get that layer off first. And then yeah, you'll see. Oh, that's the person coming to fix the... Yeah, for the gas. It's All right. Patricio. So mid-interview, um, guy came to check out the water tank. So we had to stop the interview. But he So tell boy that shit working. We're going to be like, nah. We had a quick intermission. Uh, Y'all finally got uh, hot water. So that's oh, it. For today. Hopefully, okay. We'll see what shower looks like. You're not trusting, you'll trust it. I know. It's been off and on, but we're going to see. We're going to be hopeful. Maybe he did something we ain't, we missed. Same thing. He turned it up to max. Mm -hmm. We had it on max. It was cold this morning. He got it hot this, today, right now. I even put my hand in there. It's hot. It ain't piping hot, but it's hot. So we're going to roll what we got. We're going to take see. the punches. All right, so now we're on. We're actually at the part where y'all just got here. Y'all arrive at the house. It's the first time we met. First time we seen y'all. Mm -hmm. um, first okay. time. First time we put an actual you to your voice. Yeah. In person. I heard you around the corner, and yeah. I, I got on. I got on Ruby mode, low key. <laughs> I told you Moving that. Down. I told you that. I told you that. Our, our Uber, our Uber driver. Uh, was over there talking to you, Jorge. Yeah, Jorge. And I was like, why he ain't left yet? And I heard Cam voice, and I knew Cam voice from, from YouTube. And I was like, that's him. <laughs> the man of the legend. I went around the corner, he was standing right there like, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yo, it's you. <laughs> he was like, I just watched that video I this just, morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 good stuff, good stuff. But when I seen y'all, y'all were going through some things. I was like, you know, because I just came over, check, make sure everything mm -hmm. good, see how y'all, you know. Yeah, good way. And then good I walk segment. in. Good and <laughs> Good segment. It's moving day. So, here's some things to know about Mexico when you're moving from the U.S. I don't care if you tell them that you're coming to Mexico, because I did tell all my banks this. Mm -hmm. And every last one of them locked up. Every last Froze. one. Froze. We could not zail. We could not transfer. We could not cash out. We could not do nothing. Just on moving day. It was horrific. 
Another thing to note is when you go to the ATM here, you can only withdraw based off your bank anywhere from 300 to 500 USD per day. So if you need, let's say, a thousand dollars USD, you gotta do that in a couple days. Not you ain't gonna be able to go do it in one day. Well, you gotta have multiple banks to do it with. So just a heads up, don't get caught in that, that because we got caught up in that too. So we couldn't even go get the pesos that we needed. But yeah, so we got here, we're trying to finalize everything, get the money to our landlord, which is the same landlord that Kim and them have, and it just was not working. We used, tried to use our mom, or his mama. We tried to use our daughter. Mm -hmm. We tried to use a friend, and it all failed. Yep. Everything got blocked, everything was rejected. So what happened? Cam paid our rent. <laughs> <laughs> so we can move in. <laughs> it, 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 it happened so smooth, though, because he walked in being a good servant. Like, he came in. Just to uh, check on us. Yeah, a check. five gallon jug of water. Yeah, because yeah. we had no drink of water. So he like, everything good? And I'm like, yo, bro, no, not really. Come on in, man. So he came in. He's like, oh, that's all y'all need. Oh, shucks, I can do that. And it was like, it made it so just effortless right there. Cause he we just was, paid the money. Paying. Didn't even. He was like, yeah, y'all just get it back to me. Yeah. <laughs> now, we did pay it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did no, pay it back. Paid it back. Yeah. But the cool thing they both said, Cam said, and our landlord said was, this happens. And they were kind of cool, like, yo, this this is a thing. Whereas with us, we're not used to that. Mm -hmm. So it was cool to see everybody else was cool, just the newcomers. We weren't cool with that. So it was, up. Just, it was just frustrating because, like Very I said, so. I had did all the proper communication with the bank. Yep. And then I'm on the phone with the bank, and they're like, it's not us. This is Zell because we're trying to Zell. And, yeah. and it's like, it, and then it, it was just a whole scene. And I, it, it took like seven days for our accounts to be released and, and money say, to be given back. I've never seen anything like that. What y'all were dealing with was a next, was like the next level. Like when my bank locked up, I call them, it's done. And they're not even like an international bank. So I had to go through that barrier. But what y'all was going through, I don't know why they locked all, <laughs> like they just, it was like left, right, locked. Then they not really giving you answers. They can't figure out. That was a whole nother <laughs> they level. They said it was high risk. Now y'all want to know yeah. who we bank with? So we were using Navy Federal and Which USAA. Which I used to. Yeah. And then we were trying to use, and we even went to try to use PayPal. None of them would work. Jeez. PayPal took the longest to release our funds. They yes. took almost a week to release money that they locked up. And Navy Federal took like two days. Because this mm -hmm. was a Saturday we was moving. So just uh, heads up, if that's who you bank with, even if you tell them, even with my credit card with Navy Federal, I was using it just fine doing Uber's or the DD. Then all of a sudden they like block, you can't use your credit card, and I'm like, what are y'all doing? Yeah, that's unfortunate. So just a heads up, it happens. Um, but that was the start of moving day. And yeah, so I helped y'all a lot, but then we realized there was no gas in the house. Not until after we went grocery shopping. Yeah. Here's the thing about that. So, Kim, like, he like. It gets better. He like, he like well, y'all need some groceries and things. I got the truck. I'll take y'all. It's just easier that way. That way you don't got to worry about it. Just let me. He was supposed to be editing videos, but he ended up really not even getting that us. done. <laughs> helping us out, being a good Samaritan. So, he took his girl. Well, we went to um, Bien Confidente. Yeah. Where we had some chilaquiles and the kids had ice cream. And then we and we met Arlene and, and um, Sergio and yeah, the girls. Um, <laughs> and then we went to um, Soriana and got groceries. Yeah. So we think, okay, we'll come back and we're gonna cook and get hot showers. We need it. It's been a long day. Y'all it's been a long day. So we come back and we trying to get the stove on, and it's just ticking. I'm like, huh? I know we've been using Cam all day, but can you go ask him? Are we not doing this right? Oh. And he come over, he was like, I don't think y'all got any gas. And yeah. we didn't have gas, and we haven't had gas for 13 days. Yeah, there was a crisis. And this, again, unforeseen things <laughs> that happen when you travel. There happens to be a crisis going on. A and shortage. Saying, yeah, shortage for gas. So yeah. you can't really... Um, can't do can't, anything about you that. You can't, yeah. There's nothing you can do. And then also, on top of that, y'all's tank is on the roof. Which makes it even harder to get gas. So the, the the truck came, but they didn't have the proper. Yeah, oh. yeah. So we so that was another yeah, thing. So crazy. we thought we was gonna have gas on day seven, and the truck came, and they like, 
Oh, uh, no, nah, we can't get in because we need a long hose to get to our tank, and our tank can't be moved. So they like, they're going to send somebody else back. The same day. Same course. day. So we put a note on Spanish on the gate and everything. Like, this lock, <laughs> call this number. Like, please, just, we want this gas. Yeah. This was enough. This was a Saturday after we moved in. They never came back, of course, because it was Saturday. They stopped at 3 p.m. working. Mm-hmm. So oh, I cut off. Eric, like, oh, yeah. our landlord, Eric, was like, okay, we'll get them. Get them out there Monday. So they did come Monday. This past Monday, so which put us in nine days. But as we said, while we've been able to cook, we've not been able to still have hot showers. I've had one two-minute hot shower since that, and Patricio just came to try to fix it. So hopefully we have. We'll, we'll give an update. We'll let Cam know. <laughs> yeah, let me know. Let me know. Um, so surprises, things like that y'all kind of learned about, like uh, you're talking about the language barrier, like ordering food. Uh, just like kind of going to the snacks, you know. <laughs> the death of the Dorito. <laughs> the death of the Dorito. If you a snacker like me, uh, embrace yourself. Uh, we ordered. <laughs> Stop laughing. He <laughs> already know how this goes. But we we ordered some snacks and ordered Doritos. The bag looks the same. Hear me out. Bag looks the same. Says nachos on. But the one in the U.S. say nacho cheese. Ah. Uh, he just say nacho. Say nacho. So, I didn't notice that to just now. So, you can imagine how this goes. Open up the big red bag. Put my hand in. I'm ready to eat me some Doritos. I bite on these Doritos. It's not Doritos. It's not what I'm used to. <laughs> the difference is, it's not a cheesy taste like we used to. It has a spicy taste to it, okay? It got a little spicy kick to it, so it's going to catch you off guard. It threw me back for a little bit. Um, even my son, Champ, was like, hey, Dad, the Doritos don't taste the same. I was like, yeah, I know, bro. I, we got we to gotta figure this out. <laughs> we wanted snacks bad enough a couple of days later, and guess what? They ate them Doritos. We ate those yeah. Doritos. You said it took a few days. It took a couple <laughs> days. You got to set in your mind for a minute that these ain't the right. These not your Doritos that we used to, but I these are our new Doritos. No, we're not buying no more. We're not buying no more. We're going to go ahead and make this work. From where we from, you're going to make this work, or you ain't going to have no snack. Right. So so we end up eating the Doritos, making that work. Mm-hmm. Um, then we got the Oreos. Same thing. Dang. Same thing. It's a, it's a, it's a different, it's a different mix. Mm-hmm. The thing is with that, you just got to understand you're in a new place. Mm-hmm. You chose to be here. They didn't ask you to come here, so you gotta you gotta alter your taste buds for what's going on. Cause this is home. This is now home. You can order in stuff. Yeah, it's gonna cost you more. But the reality of it is, keep an open mind to it. You know, now we we bust down that whole bag of Doritos. We got some sour cream and onion chips the other day. They were spot on. Okay. I'm gonna tell you that they were spot on. <laughs> I didn't think so. I thought they tasted. That different. was her. That was her stance. But hey, we. Man. I thought they taste more oniony, but they were good to go. Uh, now your ladies. They hit, they don't have any Uts. I'm a big Uts fan. No Uts. I haven't ran across any Uts yet, so I'm going to have to be ordering those. Uh, it's not that serious. The, <laughs> <laughs> the sour Skittles. I like the green bag of Skittles. The green bag. <laughs> <laughs> he always laughing when I start talking. Yo, but I like the green bag. Can't find the green bag. So we have been on Amazon to see I can order those as well. We have not. I have. <laughs> so we got one I have. I have found those. They got the red bag of Skittles. That's cool. Uh, I think we had, uh, what else we had? Gummy bears. Gummy bears. Yo, they they ordered, snacks. they have gummy bears. <laughs> I'm a snacker, bro. <laughs> gummy bears, but they not the big bag of gummy bears. They have individual bags, no matter where we get them from. They're going to be the individuals. So you got to get you maybe one or two, but those are 60 pesos, if I ain't mistaken. Ain't that right? No. They're not 60 pesos? No, How much? 15, 15 pesos. Oh, my bad. 15 pesos. That's, but that's he don't cheap. be doing the order. I don't. I and be first doing the off, it don't cost more. It don't cost. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's great, man. That's awesome. I, mean, I wouldn't even. I would have never, because you know what our family thing. I never would have tasted any of this stuff. Yeah. So it's like now this is the content, so you know what it yeah, is. So, yeah. So yeah. So like we the people, we the carnivores, and of course the snack <laughs> house. So Cam and them eat vegan. So I think you probably, if you're vegan, you got a better chance of your food just not being too different because you eating just vegetables and the same thing, good yeah. food. You know. But if you into junk food and things like that, <laughs> or you're into meats, there are some differences. Like even like burgers. Like if you order yeah. get burger patties in the pack, I don't 
I don't know what they taste like. They don't. It's not. It's not a burger. But I mean, it's a burger, but it's not a burger like you used to in the United States. So, which also makes me a little nervous about ordering one out because mm -hmm. they just. I don't know. It kind of give me a cross like if a burger married a chuck wagon. You know, like, my friend told me that it's they mix the meats. That must it's be not fully a hundred percent beef. Yeah, it, it, it's not because like it don't taste beef. It tastes like I said, it has an underlying. It's weird, a little weird taste, but it's not a bad taste. Like it's not like you can't eat it. Like we made cheeseburgers the other day for dinner, mm -hmm. and it was fine. I ate it, but like, like I said, I just felt like I was eating like a burger chuck wagon. Mm -hmm. If you remember chuck wagons from back in the day when you went to school, if you was in the nineties, chuck wagons was a common sandwich. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they sell them anymore. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, um, I think other than that, I mean, you just got to, when you're ordering things here, it's, it's cheaper to order. Like, we, now, Little Caesars tastes the same. It's just a little bit drier. Don't have as much marinara sauce, and there's no way to say extra marinara sauce, at least where I'm ordering from on the app. But we get it because our baby boy only eats a few things. So that's one thing I'm ordering, like, a couple times a week. But it's the same price to have it delivered with tip as it is to go pick one up in the States. Actually, it's a little less. So for me, that's not an inconvenience, and it'll get here in, like, 20 minutes, and I know he'll eat because it's pizza. The maple syrup, different. Yeah. It tastes, it had, like, a... I don't, a hint of, I don't, almost, Ron said like he thought I made chocolate chip pancakes the other day <laughs> because of the maple syrup, but I don't know. But it's just a little different. Some of the ketchups are different. Ketchup, definitely. Yeah, you gotta, you, 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 you gotta, yeah. yeah, you gotta just, you gonna have to just try them and see. Like the ones that say Heinz, they've been pretty consistent. But like yesterday I ordered one and I don't know, I was trying to spend less pesos, so I ordered a cheaper one, but it was a brand that you see in the States, I think it was Del Monte, mm -hmm. and my son, my oldest son said it tastes like barbecue ketchup, but my baby boy, because he is, um, he has, he's extra special, has some very high sensory taste buds, he would eat the ketchup, he like, it's not ketchup, mom, and he stopped eating his food because he only eat his food with ketchup. So, mm -hmm. just little things like that, if you got a child with special needs that only eat certain things you're gonna have to find them and you're gonna go through some trial and error like i literally have to make him pancakes daily um i did find a syrup that he'll eat so we just stick with that i know now i gotta stick with just the one type of ketchup because he's not gonna eat the others um i think that's the baked goods are good here and cheap mm -hmm. so i mean like yeah. we've had good muffins yeah, had some good <laughs> from and we've got those from like strawberry um i ordered a piece of carrot cake from a bakery that was actually good tasting better than carrot cake I've had in the States. I had got, got a piece of red velvet from there. That one wasn't good, but mm -hmm. um, the carrot cake was good. So, I mean, nice. like, we had some, like, um, the one thing that we had, I would say, was trash that I just can't even give no grace to was the burrito tacos. Oh, yeah. We people ordered, people die for those people, like, that burrito tacos, that's where it is. They, I have not, not the ones we got. Yeah, we got to yeah. get the ones that they died for because the ones we had, they was, they was going to feel like they were going to kill us. They was nasty. Um, they just, they was not Berean at all. I was like, I'll just make my own. I know how to make them myself. I was like, I'll just make them myself because, like, it was just nasty. Like, wow. they were soggy. Like, the tortillas were not fried and crispy like Berean tacos are. Mm -hmm. The broth was, the the was consomme like, yeah. was not doing it. Mm -hmm. It just, everything, was, it was just bad. Wow. Now, granted, we're not trying to smash on nothing. Cause I, I mean, we ain't even tell you who it <laughs> no, is. No, no, no. We ain't nah. tell you who it it's, was. But it just, I mean, because I can't even remember the rest of my. I just know I won't order them again. Uh -huh. And, um, yeah. Yeah, no. And honestly, I, that that's kind of a good segue into another thing is like, um, Americans sometimes come here with the expectation of Mexican food, mm -hmm. too. And it's like different. And um, I think I had a friend, uh, we were sitting down at like one of the taco spots, and I was telling him about Taco Bell, and he's like, a what? He was like, a gordita? What is that? And he didn't, he was like, I was explaining to him what Taco Bell was, and he was like, that's not Mexican food. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, we we have like a different view of it, but no, the real tacos, there's no excuse for that. That's yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, know, I, know no I mean, I know they're more specific with to Guadalajara or somewhere like that. They're not mm -hmm. really like a Yucatecan. That's true. That's you know, true. staple dish. So I just chalked it up to like, this just might not be the place to have burrito. Well, I got to find somebody who know what a good burrito is. Yeah, and if we do from, enjoy burrito, but like. If it's from a different country too, it would probably be best to find, like, you know, you find like the Jamaican spots, like mm -hmm. real Jamaican spots. Yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. find like the real Chinese food yeah, spots. It's yeah. like, you got to find like, probably out here it's probably the same. Yeah, got to find a Guadalajara burrito store. Right. Are we going into another question? Real quick. 
you will notice on the snacks that you're used to, you're going to have warning labels on the front of them. Black warning labels mm -hmm. or a big red label. You're gonna, and they're going to tell you all the bad stuff that's in it. Let you know before you even touch it what's in it. We don't have that in the state, so it was kind of shocking to see, like, oh, all the cereals have it. Yeah. Everything is on there, so you guys heads up. Yeah, it's up. gonna say excessive, excessivo. Excessivo calories. Yeah, excessive, yeah. basically it's like okay, you gonna you eat this, you are gonna be fat. You eat this, you are gonna have high blood pressure. You eat this, you are gonna have diabetes. Like it tell they you. Let you know up front, on the front label say Doritos and then bop 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 all this stuff yeah. right there in front of you. Order. Uh, the cinnamon toast crunch we bought it has it on the front of it boom 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 all these different little labels on the front of it let you know what you're getting yourself into before you eat it yep. so then you start to think do I really want to get this to my babies or do I really want to eat this me right now where I'm at in life I still need these snacks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be reading like I gotta know I'm gonna die from this today but there we oh, go oh man that's <laughs> awesome so, so snacks ordering and the language barrier as far as like the appliances like you said you know you got mm -hmm. here okay, you yeah. realize that yeah. that's another thing so you know you're coming to Mexico and you know like is everything gonna be predominantly Spanish you know cool we did not think about appliances. Facts. Like the fact that your washing machine is going to be in all Espanol. And we got this two in one. It's not an old school washing machine where you can kind of figure out and just twist the knob. So, like, you literally having to Google Translate your washing machine, your microwaves, yep. because you don't know how to use them. I mean, so these are things you just got to be aware of. Like, don't get frustrated and be like, I can't wash my clothes, you know, because. <laughs> Four like, ticks to the right. That's on our wash. Yeah, can't, you can't say that. Everybody got different washing machines. Yeah, that's what we figured I mean, out. Four ticks like, to the right. We I mean, you, you, we know Levito Le mean quick, or Rapido mean quick, and Levito mean wash. So just, just if you see Rapido, just go with that, and then, you know it's going to be a quick wash. Because mm -hmm. if not, like our washing machine was running like two hours on the load, and I'm like, no, we're not doing that. Trying Trying like a, they that. is not getting that clean. Yeah, <laughs> it's circling it like that, no. And then ordering the Spanish, I remember y'all when y'all first was talking to me about it and you learning the phrases, like the mm -hmm. go-to things, and it's like... I'm still struggling there. We yeah. still ain't learned them. Uh, we did all these, we would do Spanish every day at home for like an hour before we came. And then it's like we got here and it's just evaporated. It's not in our head. I still know my basic stuff, like how you doing, you know, what's your name, where you from, I can tell you where I'm from. Right. But... You know, outside of that, like, I just know random words. And one thing that's funny about here, right, like, even when the gas people came the other day, like, one of them was speaking to us in Spanish, and I'm like, no entiendo, no comprende, no comprende, like, no le say, I don't know, like, what you're saying, like, just, like, un momento, I don't understand, and he just still talking. So then, like, his partner, like, oh, okay. So I'm thinking he about to start speaking in English. He just spoke in slower Spanish. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Bro, I'm about to get the translator because we just not getting anywhere. Because we could, we did not know any of the words they were saying. And all I kept hearing was, oh, well, he kept saying, they saying something about Ocho, Ocho. And I'm like, what? That's eight. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not eight. hearing this. And I'm just like, are they asking us for money? Like, are yeah. they asking for a trip fee? And I'm just like, you know, because you used to that in the States. Like, they come, they might charge you a trip fee. So I was like, so I just wanted to make sure there wasn't nothing like that going on. And we weren't about to be like, you know, running into some murky water. So we just mm -hmm. had to break out Google Translate. Yeah. But what I will say with that too is if you if the people see the locals see that you're trying yep. to speak Spanish, they will be so patient with you. Um I just we just took a pause because the, the the guy came to check the water heater for us and we were in the house and me and him going back and forth struggling to get get it done but we got it done and he want to know where you're from he's smiling at the end of it yesterday or like i said we went to go pick up some food <clears throat> me and uh, two of our, our two older kids and while we in there number one the waiter we had the other night was in there so he remembered me yeah mm -hmm. he remembered me but another waiter dealt with me but i told him the best i could i don't think the guy understood my order and he told me what do you want I, we, he pulled out the pad and what do you want so we got we got it done but the mm -hmm. thing is, is if you don't get upset, frustrated, like, why they not talking English? Hey, once again, we in Mexico. They not in America. You got to understand that. And, and yes, we, like she said, we did take the proper steps of trying to study this thing when we made our minds because we hadn't had Spanish. I hadn't had Spanish since high school, college years. So I knew I was rusty. I'm still rusty. I'm still doing courses now for like 30, 40 minutes a day, trying to pick it back up. 
it'll come in time. You're gonna hear some words. We were talking about it. Yeah. Um, the other day at your house, yeah. and y'all, you and your wife was, you know, Becca was saying some stuff, and it started re- re- reminding me of some things. But it yeah. takes some time. But the people, they will work with you if you're working with them. The minute you get agitated and aggravated and snapping off, energy gonna be energy. Yeah. FYI. Yeah. So they're just not gonna help you. I mean, right. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, which I mean, why? I mean, I feel this, I mean the same way. I mean, if you're gonna be rude, what's the? You mean you don't need my right. help? Right. And know? that's that. Like we got that Americanness. You know, yeah. it's like, and I like that the people I'm meeting, they usually don't have that. Usually, the people I'm around, you know, we trying to learn Spanish, we trying to get into the culture. So, uh, but there are those people who, you know, they come here and they want you to speak a different language. And that's not what's happening. That's not on this channel. That's not we came to Mexico to embrace Mexican culture, not right, to change right. it, not to adapt it to us, none of that. So right. uh, people yeah. come on the channel sometimes, they're like, oh, you're in Mexico, do this. It's like, I'm cool, let's do it. You know, mm-hmm. that's what I want and that's what I want for my family, that's why I came here. So, um, we talked about snacks, we talked about ordering, we talked about families. Uh, all right, so yeah, we're kind of at the end of this. Um, my thing is to get so y'all in the house. How is the house? Like, what is it like? Like, is it you know, it's it's beautiful I mean, house, but how y'all feel? I mean, we love the house. The house is great. The kids love the house. Um, they have a pool. They want to get in every single day. But every we're just trying to tell day. them, you know, just because of you know, take care of our hair. We all have locks. We just like you know, you going Do y'all want your hair to fall out? Cause chlorine will kill your hair, and they just they don't care. I'm like, okay, you know, around here ball, the lock stop falling <laughs> out. You gonna care then, but um, kids, kids, they don't understand. They just six, nine, and eleven. So, but I don't think I told y'all how, how we found like the house. Like y'all gave us the criteria, and we were looking, and it's like we wanted to make sure y'all were in a good area. That was like the first thing. It's like we're not gonna find the house unless they're in a good area. So we would find things, but it would be like on the outskirts, or it'd be somewhere. It's like, nah, we need mm-hmm. them in a good area. And then our neighbor was like, yeah, I'm moving out. And uh, I didn't, it didn't even, click. didn't even click. And then one day he caught me while I was going to jujitsu. He was like, "Yeah, man, moving out in November." I'm like, "Why is November so significant?" <laughs> <laughs> like something about this. And I was talking to Becca. I was like, "Becca, he's moving out, and I can't figure it out." And it just clicked. And then I was like, "Let me check the price." Everything was like, yeah. it has a pool." I was like, "And we in this area? Let's get it." Yeah, Let's I mean, go. yeah, that's how we found our house. Like Becca and Cam, like they found a house. Paid the rent for us to move into the house. They did the video for us. <laughs> they did the video yeah. tour for us. Like they, it made they made it seem was like the paying them for the consultation. I, we definitely got our money, our value, like hands Way down. Because like they really offer you the service of like anytime. I mean, I would just randomly text Be- Becca and she respond to these questions. I mean, I'm talking about random questions. I'd be like, Have you heard of this? Have you seen this? Where is this at? Where is that? And she respond, you know. And even if she took like a day or so to respond, because I'd be like, no, no hurry, you know, just got a question. Mm-hmm. She'd be like, my apologies, I was traveling. I was like, you don't got to apologize. I know you live your life. I just had a question. want to know if you could answer. Mm-hmm. So like when I say over the top service, like and for the value of what we paid, I'm not going to say what we paid because that's between oh, them that's- and whoever moved forward. <laughs> right. But like just understand you will definitely get the value with them and they're honest and like they're gonna sit down and figure out what do you want like mm-hmm. and they're gonna help you get it like I, we had even got to the point where like because we hadn't found a place before they found this place where we just agreed to they would take us to see places for a couple of days when we got here yeah like if it came down to it like they would actually just take time out that day and take us around Absolutely. to find places and so that was a relief because we knew we weren't gonna be homeless we knew we were coming mm-hmm. and we were just like we good with that. But yeah. when they found this place, it was just hands down. Like, it was just so convenient. Like, would we have loved to pay less? Sure. Mm-hmm. But we would have probably been out further. Like, you know, like, I was interested in Concow or being, like, in the heart of Concow because I knew we could walk there. But mm-hmm. this just worked out because then I was like, well, immediately, like, the kids heard it. And they were like, we got to live there so we can be by Nina and the YouTubers. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, you know y'all cannot, like, just harass them all. And they're like, but, <laughs> but they're our friends. I'm like, we haven't even met them in person yet. But the kids were just so so like we had to live close to them. And I mean, it's really paid off. I mean, definitely. Well, and let me say this too, because a lot of people watch the channel and they see YouTubers. I am a person first. Like <laughs> you, you can see the person you see in the, in the videos. It translates. I, I don't change. Uh, I don't French. try to like. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to put on nothing like. Yeah. This is who I am, and I tell people this channel yeah, all yeah. the time. I'm not showing you this ideal version. You're gonna see, you're gonna see some dirt. You're gonna see, you know, 
the reality of our situation. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like when y'all say that, it's like I am a person before I'm a YouTuber. And um, yeah, but your first impressions of the place, the house looks nice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good. It's better than our house. That's our house over there. <laughs> it's it's better. Um, as far as like y'all have the more updated model, and you know, we don't like you see our backyards. We got like two plants. Y'all got like the little you know little oasis yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it'd be tidied up some, but you it's know. nice. It's yeah, nice. but it's I mean it's a whole vibe like. When you're sitting in the house at night, we cut the lights on by the pool and it has this like yeah. beautiful glow. Oh, so it just give you like, oh, I'm just at the resort chilling vibe or you just, mm -hmm. you know, and you just relax. Like you can just go into Zen mode. Like I'll just, when it's raining, like it's times so that we'll just be sitting here in the house if it'll start raining and like we won't have no TV on, no nothing on. We just sitting there and we're just listening and looking at the rain and just taking in the sounds and just enjoying the peace yeah i mean because one thing i can say since we've stepped into mexico i have had an overwhelming amount of peace like we walk at night we walk not during the day not, 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 not because of me not because of me. it's because your boy it's because your boy you know it's because of you know it's the it's it's not even because of you it's it's the way in which america like the posture you have to take to survive or to like thrive. It's like you have like a, you know, your head is on a swivel. You have survival instincts. And a lot of people, it's not, it's not just, it's just not a nice environment to grow up in. Like I call it the belly of the beast, but you grow up there and you, you develop these habits that a lot of people around the world can't even understand. Yeah. So. Man, man you've had those conversations. Um, in prime example, like he talking about, I, I work out, you can be the shirt, you see that. Um, but like I was got I got up one morning to go to the gym. It's like four thirty five o'clock in the morning. I was gonna go no, I was gonna go for a run. But we have a gated community and like I told Cam I think I hit like a, a level of like PTSD because I looked at the gate and I was like, I ain't never been outside the gate, number one by myself. Number two, my Spanish ain't strong. Number three, I'm a black male. Going out somewhere in a foreign land and like dark o'clock and my heart started racing and so I went back in the house for a minute and I had to regroup and tell myself I told myself I'm gonna do this let's get it let's get it done so he came and gave me a kiss I did I restarted I recalibrated the whole morning again let's do this thing and I went out the gate heart still racing went down to the street and it's the main main strip and I just started to walk and as I started to walk down the street I started to realize it's cool when I got to the park where I could run, like Cam said, well, nobody paying me no mind. Ain't nobody, they was doing their own thing. They working out, they running, they doing their thing. And I came back and I kind of felt like I achieved something to know that it just, like Cam said, it's, it's layers to this thing that's got to be done. And, and it's more damage that's done to us as African-Americans from the States or African-American males, especially in the States. Um, then the other morning we went and worked out together and me and Cam was talking about we were taking a cool down. And I was like, yo, Cam, it'd be the craziest thing if they'd be like, yo, we got two black males running around the neighborhood, da-da-da-da-da. And as he like, bro, you got to chill out. The cop rolled by, <laughs> but they won't even stunt us. You see what I'm saying? So it's things like that that you don't even realize that you been, you have on the inside of you that you got to get off. And he and just keep, he keep bragging about, hey, y'all going to hit this level where Tell the wall's going to come down. So I'm ready to embrace that whenever that's going to be. Yeah. But right now. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, yeah, they have to get the raisin boy some certain things, man. One day at a time. <laughs> yeah, it takes time because it's it's you gotta think of how long you you've spent this amount of your life, you know, doing this way, acting this way, feeling this way, and it's been a survival instinct. It's kept you alive. It's you know, and now it's like you're in that second phase where you got this much, and you have to believe first that it's yeah. you you got room. You know, you can you can expand. You can breathe. You could be yourself and no one is going to, it's not going to affect your safety in any way. And it takes time. It takes time. But, um, I mean, I even let the kids go play outside here. Like they'll go play outside with Nina and, um, I never in the United States do with my kids go outside by themselves. I eat, I don't care where we were. I don't care if we was in the country. I would be on the porch stand or I'd have him on the porch stand and, when we was in Houston, like, they want to go outside and play with friends. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. Y'all go outside and we go outside. Like, it just was, a, for me, it's always, like, I'm real protective of them. Yep. 
and like the other day they were outside and we both well I was Everybody in the house, was in the house. <laughs> and he was, over, he was he was over at Cam in them house and they were outside playing I could hear them but I was just okay with it I would just peek out and they just were playing and they yeah. love that freedom because they get to actually be kids yes. like how we used to get yes. to play outside they get to do things like that like like there are meetups at the park that we've been invited to like we've been invited to a birthday party sunday so it's just like oh cool y'all got yeah, the yeah the mm-hmm. invite becca sent it to oh, me oh snap so i asked her where y'all going because i was like are y'all going so if y'all go we can ride with y'all do we need to get a car like just trying to figure it out um but so like like you'll definitely get plugged in and your kids can play and get outside which is a yeah. beautiful thing because they need to be outside like like now since they get to come outside they're not spending as much time playing games like we don't even have our son's playstation yet he that's not even the first thing he won't mail he want his um his board his skateboard and hoverboard sent mm-hmm. first so he can be outside right which is beautiful because at one point all he wanted to do was play on the yeah. game all day yeah. so yeah that's, that's one more thing before we get out of here you got to get used to um the, the locals looking at you as you walk across the street, we didn't have them. We walk across the street, they stop the cars and just want to look. Um, but they also stop the cars and let you go because you have children. Yes. Like they will stop traffic when they see you with kids to let you go across safely. Yes. So it's kind of just getting used to that because we, we were going to the tail cell to get service and stuff. And um, excuse me, you had you had the people just looking in amazement, you know, like disbelief, almost like a they seeing a celebrity or something. But what we were also told later on and learned was that. It's not too often they see what we were, African Americans, mm-hmm. and then a lot of us. It's a family of us it's moving as a unit. So they, she's had compliments about the family. Um, people want to talk to you. With my son, we went to the fruit well, the fruit stand to get drinks the other day, and the guy was talking to us about our hair, just stuff like that. Just kind of dope, if you ask me. Yeah, it's an interest. It's like a, an intrigue rather than like a, you know how. It, and sometimes it can be. Um, it's not it a hostile look. Right, right. Or not scared of you. They're not scared of you. Yeah. They just, Inquisitive. Yeah, they just more so just be like, word. I mean, they, and they you might see a mouth drop open. Like, yeah. I seen somebody, they seen us, and they were like, yeah, yeah. And yep. like, you know, it was kind of like a wow. And I was like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Give a little, little president wave. I was like, it. well, I, you know. So, so then when you hit them with that, the old line and all that, mm-hmm. game change. Now, you said it hasn't been enough time to really get like an understanding of how you truly feel about the whole experience, but we are going to do like a recap in yeah, six yeah. months, see where yeah. you guys are. Um, but first impression so far, good? Yeah, yeah great. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, I love it like I thought I would. I mean, even with all the hiccups, I wouldn't change it. Like, the one thing I'll say if you're thinking about do it, the same thing anybody else that says that has done it, well, well, I don't care what you're thinking about moving abroad, just do it because you'll never be 100% prepared. Like, it doesn't matter. You're gonna get there, things gonna go wrong, things gonna go right, things gonna be indifferent. But if you just keep sitting at home planning and planning and planning and planning and planning, you're just gonna be more devastated because you spent all that time planning and it's still gonna go off script. Yep. Because once you get out here, it is not your script, it is just <laughs> what's gonna happen. And you just gotta be willing to adjust and be okay with that. And I think if you can, you got the mindset of like, it's not gonna break me, it's just. It's something so small. Like even not having hot water and us having to wait till like the middle of the day to get like a warm shower is not the worst thing in the world, right? Because when you look at the trade-offs of for this house with a private pool, we pay 60% less, well 65% less in rent here for this than what we pay for an apartment in Houston. So like when you look at that trade-off, when you look at just the piece that we have, you know, and the quality of food, the reason the snacks taste different is because they don't have all the coloring and different additives, and they're made here in Mexico, so they don't have all the extra stuff that you have in the U.S. That's why it tastes different. It's not chock full of all the preservatives and stuff, so the chips are a little crunchier because, you know, they just, <laughs> they just that's how they're going to be. But, like, if you can get past all that vain stuff of like, oh, I want this or I want that or I can't accept this. Or if you get offended by everything, then you should just stay where you at. Because of people who get easily offended, moving abroad is not for you. Because mm-hmm. you will always find a reason to be offended. So, like, one thing I learned to do a long time ago is stop being offended by small things. Like, I look for reasons not to be offended, you know, because rather than to be offended. Because yeah. it's just pointless. It doesn't serve me or anybody else. So... Mm-hmm. If you can just be open to that, you can really come here and you can watch your kids just really blossom. You can feel yourself blossom. Like, I even came down the steps the other day, and for the first time in years, I thought, like, what is it that I want to do? 
like you know because it's actually an option now for me opposed to like the grind and the hustle of day-to-day -day life make this happen make that happen now it's like i have this time where i'm just like okay what do i want to do like because all of our books and stuff we still waiting for stuff to be shipped so i don't have a lot of my books and i like to physically read and write and so it's just like what else do i want to do and so i think that's a big thing when you realize there's time for you to really think about you especially as a parent a mom you spend so much time as a wife or partner thinking about the other person and everybody else you find yourself like really forgetting about you until the end of the day and then you're like oh i wanted to do this today and you never do it now i have the time it's just about when am i going to do it yeah um i'm loving it man um uh, i'm seeing myself with the you know just the peace of mind got up this morning i took a picture of the sunrise a couple i caught it in phases actually this morning um, so that was kind of cool, um, and it just happened we, we did it at the end of the day. Did something different the first time. I think we are the first people in our families to do something this drastic. Ever, yeah, um, that we know on of. On both sides that we know of. Um, I think the biggest thing in my family was like, I had a family member that used to live, where well, he lives in Texas. That used to be the big thing, you know, he lived in Texas, everybody else was on the East Coast. Um, so that was a big thing, so we kind of surpassed that, no competition or nothing. But in that, unless your family, your friends see, um, you're doing some things or they can do some things as well bigger than what they thought mm -hmm. and just enjoying life um, you only get one shot at life and it's just making the memories of every day uh, you get up every morning like me I'm, I'm kind of routine set so instead of you know just it's structured but now it's just relaxed it's, it's I'm getting it done um, trading it just that's something I do uh, you just got a peace of mind um, like I said the the weight of the world, like, for the most part, is off your shoulders for the most part. So it's just cool. And learning, I, learning Spanish is my next big thing. Yeah, that's the next <laughs> like thing. Like, like, I, I want to be in a like immersive Spanish class because I yes. don't like not being able to communicate with people mm -hmm. on my own. You know, at least to be able to get through the conversation. Like even down to when we, last thing we went to Soriano's after we did the bicycle ride last Sunday. And we, I'm trying to self check out. And I'm like, Cam, what's wrong? Thing? I'm hitting the check sign. I'm like, what's, I mean, what's wrong, Cam? And he like, oh, you got a sign because it says firma, F I R M A. That's what it says on there. But like, you don't like it. Don't show a line. You know, like on the state they have like the signature spot. It just say firma. And it's just open block. And you see a check and an X. So I'm like, I want this to go through. Like check, check. <laughs> so I had to call him over because I really I didn't even know that. So it's just like those little things that you gotta learn and understand. But I me, mean, you'll get through it. It's not the worst. I mean, it's just it's just it's what it is. I mean, for us, we've just. We blessed because we got Cam and Becca who kind of hold our hands and walk us through a lot of the things. Like, eat, like they ba like they're doing a lot of babysitting with us and stepping us into the community, which is really helpful. And I think we need that type of some support because a lot of people fall off because they don't have the support. And for us, they immediately gave us community, so we don't feel like isolated or alone, or like we don't have somebody to go to if we need something. And which we tell them, if y'all need anything from us, come to us, you know, like, you know, but they've really been that instant community for us. So, like, if you need that, like, you, it's no joke. You can't just come here and not have some type of community because you will, you're going to drown if you come here and you don't have some type of outlook or you're just not somebody who's willing to rough it and figure it out. Like, mm -hmm. you need the support. Yeah. So, definitely plug in, like, get into the different groups, like. I've been put in a lot of groups, mom groups, and that helps too. But the, and there's still so many more. And I gotta get yeah, you there's so there. many, and I'm only like in <laughs> so two groups. Many more. But like they're planning for us to go do do the theater for Moana, like all by ourselves with our kids. It's a black moms group that want to do that. They talk about a moms out only to see Gladiator, like different things like that. They talk about doing Thanksgiving in Central, like. It's dad's um, trading groups. It's yeah. it's it's buy yeah. sale. It's trade sale. All kind of groups in like yeah. You know, so it's, we're not even plugged in completely. <clears throat> we just kind of put a toe in. So we still waiting to fully get in. But we 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 love where we at. Even down to my mom asked our daughter who's nine. She was like she had got on the phone with her. She let me talk to her because she she wants to find out if, what's the real. She like do you like it better than Texas? She said yes. <laughs> that was so, just I mean, last that, yeah, so that was two days ago. Like the kids, they like they have they have no qualms. They like we don't need to go back. Their biggest thing is where we're going next because we plan on moving around the world. So oh, really? like you know just traveling the world. So we started in Mexico to break them in. And, uh, yeah, that's a good. One. That's a good. One. Um, so that's I mean that's basically it. And uh, that advice you were saying, 